Accessible Fanboy by Pawan Dada. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Pawan is a problem solver with 12 years of experience in product development in various roles. From product development engineer to solution architect, he has created MVC-based web application and API for services capable of handling over 5 million visitors per day using Django, Twisted, Redis, SQL, Alchemy, jQuery, HTTP, and REST. Let's welcome. Yeah. So, hi. Uh, so, has anybody known Ansible? Like, have you heard about Ansible? How many people have heard about Ansible? Okay. Is anybody using it in production? Okay. So, back in 2004, one of the first jobs that I ever did was in simulation industry where we created desktop applications in uh, which did simulation on various objects. The output to all of them was quite good. You could do wind tunnel simulations and stuff like that. Uh, I'm showing this because the main important part is they were desktop applications. So back in 2004, you create your code, you, you test it, and you ship it. So by shipping, I mean we used to literally put them on, on CDs and ship them. Uh, we had four CDs because the application was so big, we couldn't fit it in one. And then we used to put it and then forget about it. Uh, in the SaaS world, uh, everything changed. So we moved from building it, testing it, and then running it on the cloud for everyone. Uh, primarily, it was simpler because uh, because of AWS, because of a lot of tools available, you could do it uh, easily. In the PaaS world, which is a platform, you basically build, test, and then run for everyone because all other people are <laughs> writing applications on your platform, and then you basically run it for them uh, out of the box. So the complexity to run a PaaS environment is like tenfold or, or hundredfold of a SaaS application. So this would be this is one of the platforms that I work on at Autodesk, uh, and I just wanted to show you how many layers are built across in a platform, right from the lowest layer, which is the cloud infrastructure and then goes up, up, up to the first one, which is the client app, uh, client application. So basically, if I'm releasing a platform, people come on my platform and then build application, and then there are third party users on, our, on top of it. So just like Facebook or Twitter, you, you, could, you could do the same analogy in what we are doing. Now, all, all of them are good. So, uh, in terms of uh, product development and testing and releases, uh, most of the stuff is still done by developers at local host, still tested on different machines uh, locally. But when you take all these blocks, so my management wants to think that these are simple blocks that we are putting one top of each other, and they run out of the box for them. But the, re the real reality is that these are like this, and all of us are developers there having different ac access to different components in the world. Uh, the damage part to, to that is, if, if, if I have like four different components in my, uh, in my SaaS application, I could easily package them up and build it uh, and ship it on, it, on AWS mm -hmm. uh, very easily. <laughs> but then if you have like hundreds and thousands of components, uh, each component needs its own CI and CD pipeline. CI and CD being continuous integration and continuous deployment pipeline. And some amount of automation needs to be done for individual services so that they go first in QA environment, dev environment, stage environment, and prod environments. Yeah, I work in enterprise world which requires us to do all these things before we say we are globally uh, available for release. Uh, the small blue box is a single component. So for example, if I'm running uh, Lazada, right? Uh, if I would I would be Lazada, all we had a talk earlier which said about microservices, right? So this could be one of the microservice, or just one of the data store or cache server, which is which is required in one of my platform layer. Okay, so I these are the current numbers that we do monthly. We spend around 4.7 million dollars on AWS, and the number of API calls on our platform are 600 million. 
to manage the infrastructure part of this is humongous i think there are dedicated teams uh hundreds of them available just to manage the infrastructure i'm not talking about the deployment just on on uh, on the management side uh one good thing about my my firm is that uh, as developers we are responsible to ship those products as well so we have to have our own devops scripts ready for them to run uh which brings me to ansible um so we ha i have used uh, uh all the available solutions uh, like puppet chef and salt stack and then we when we discovered ansible uh i probably can uh, tell you that how good it is uh, at the end of the stock um so why what's the philosophy of ansible and this is the basic thing uh which it, it this ansible differentiates from uh, either chef chef puppet or mm -hmm. uh, salt stack is that it the architecture of ansible is very simple we'll cover the architecture later in in one of the slides uh you don't require any agents or demons to run uh, any ansible uh, uh, deployment uh, everything runs through ssh keys there's a possibility to use uh, passwords but uh, ssh is far far more simpler and better to handle uh ansible believes that whatever you write uh, uh in terms of infrastructure as a code layer should be human readable and machine readable as well so the playbooks which run in ansible are uh, simple text files uh, we'll cover this those later as well uh, you don't require to be root every time because uh, not every machine will have root access when you go and connect to it and batteries included which means that the community is quite strong there are a lot of core modules available you can write your own modules a lot of things will work for you out of the box so some these are some of the use cases that we use in uh, in current environment is to provision new infrastructure so let's say if i am if i am running a microservice and then i require uh 10 new instances to be boot, boot up with certain uh uh with certain cpu memory and 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 certain packages already installed that can be done uh, easily with ansible uh we also use it for auto scaling uh in congestion with the auto scaling for aws uh we use it for continuous delivery and also for disaster recovery so you can switch different uh, aws nodes uh with ansible and then uh the playbooks are, are quite simple to write it also helps as a sleep therapist because then i have my weekends lot of things run in automation so i don't have to worry about getting a pager duty at 12 12 o'clock in the night on sunday okay so this is how the architecture of an ansible um so it looks like so at the core of it uh, uh, there's something called ansible control box which is attached to the core mod modules which are available uh for you when you install ansible you can also extend them and and have your own modules uh there are two other components uh, which is an inventory file and a playbook uh inventory file basically describes what inventory is available to you by inventory i mean what ec2 instances are available what database servers are available um there are also ways to generate these inventory dynamically um and you can write it uh, by hand as well the the second last component is a playbook playbook basically is uh, a a yml human readable text file which describes what steps you have what steps ansible has to run on your inventory uh, we'll cover different sections in the playbook later uh and the last part is the connection plugin so in the previous slides uh, uh as i mentioned uh, most of the interactions that happen is on ssh and and that's why you require ssh keys but you can also use paramico uh, or docker or a local as the connection engine and then run different stuff on on your host servers so once you combine all uh all four of things uh your uh, ansible automation can run 
effortlessly on any of the any of any number of servers that you want what so if you if you're starting with ansible new the only thing that you have to do is write an inventory file and write a playbook which require which is which says what steps you have to run on each application server so this is uh, this is a normal inventory flight, uh, file that uh, uh, that you just created so you can define different groups so there is a web server api server and db and then you can while running an ansible playbook you can say which group you want to run uh, you uh, which group you want to run uh, your inventory on so the the the, the playbook will run on these uh, uh, inventory or these EC2 instances. These numbers are all garbled up, so they are not correct. Um, and you can also define different variables. So, like in, in API server, I, I have defined HTTP port as 80 and the max USD processes is 64. So, you can use these variables inside your inside your playbook and 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 uh, and use those numbers there in a in a in a correct manner. So, for example, in the max USG number, I can then use this number to write out my USG configuration and say how many number of processes I want to run, USG processes I want to run uh, in my API server. Um, there's also a different way to def uh, define variables, the last one, which is web server vars, and then you, you basically uh, define the common variables to the whole group uh, uh, on, on, as an example in the first one. So coming to the second part, and that's the only part, the first part was inventory and the second one is playbook that you require uh, in Ansible. So as I said uh, earlier, playbook is basically uh, an instruction based file wherein you define what, what actions need to be, are to be done on your different inventory uh, instances available to you. The base, the, there are a few sections uh, and they are important and, and required as well. So you require you are required to have host, remote user, and task as the minimum sections, so that Ansible knows which host it needs to run. Uh, if if you if you write all, uh, it will run on all the all the inventory available. So all the three groups in the earlier section, all the tasks will be run uh, uh, in uh, uh, if if I run this playbook. Uh, there are also sections like pre-tasks and post-tasks which run before the task and then handlers are basically connectors which tasks can call intermediary. Uh, unless, so except handlers, everything runs from top to bottom. So there's only one flow which goes, you don't have to, you don't have to worry about things, uh, different things calling different things. Uh, in the tasks, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of modules available, which we'll cover uh, in the next slides. Uh, there are also for loops available uh, inside tasks that you can do uh, and 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 use them in different uh, ways. I can define a variable as a dictionary and then loop it through in a task to use the variables uh, uh, in my task. Um, these are the examples for variables and how do you define them. So, so remember, we in the earlier slide we use hosts all, which meant that an, or, uh, an Ansible playbook will be running on all the inventory which is available in my inventory file. I can also pass host from command line to this playbook, and then just pass on the different group which we want to run to. So here the host would be API server from my earlier slide, and then. By serial, you mean, uh, uh, so we have a condition called serial, right? So what it, it really means is, do you have to run uh, the Ansible playbook parallelly on all the instances or one by one on each, in each server? So if you have like 10 instances in your inventory and I, and I write serial one, uh, all the tasks will be executed one by one. Uh, uh, all the tasks will be executed uh, uh, one by one on the inventory and not in parallel. If I don't write serial, uh, everything will be uh, done parallelly. So both of the cases have different uh, uh, use cases. So let's say your 10 instances are running behind an ELB. You would want to run it serially because you would first want to take your instance out of ELB, deploy your application, restart your 
application and then add it back to ELB. You don't want to run them parallelly, otherwise your uh, the whole application will come down and nobody will be able to access it. Um, you can, so in the variable section, uh, as I said, you can def you can pass on arguments on command line and those will be here. So, so key secret region uh, would be used from the command line. Uh, you can also club different variables together just like in Python. So I define a, a user and then use it inside of home. Uh, it use it's it's uh, it's as good as Jinja. So if anybody is using Jinja templating, uh, it has a similar definition style. So coming to the most important part of tasks. So these tasks always run from top to bottom, uh, and then once you so these these actually emulate to whatever you have to do to deploy, and they are very simple in in understanding. So my first stop, my first task there is to stop nginx. I just use shell as a command, uh, which is a core module available uh, in Ansible, uh, and then say what uh, uh, what command I need to run, and then uh, sudo true means do I need to run it as a sudo. Uh, you also have ignore errors, uh, wherein um, if your task fails. Your Ansible playbook doesn't stop and ignore it. If you don't write it, it will crash out. Uh, in the third section, I'm doing a remote copy. So let's imagine you are deploying uh, uh, your application, which is a zipped application or zipped code, uh, to a remote invent inventory server. What you basically want to do is uh, uh, just as a developer, what, what you'll do, I'll do a git clone of my uh, whole application, uh, zip it, uh, and then do a SCP. This, this, uh, so the SCP part can be done uh, by the third task. These are simple examples. Uh, uh, the, co the core modules are very broad and you can do everything and everything which is available uh, in those core modules. Uh, we'll cover some of them and what they do later on. Uh, in the third task, there's something called notify. Uh, so in in my playbook example, there was a section called handlers which was empty. What this task would basically do is it would go and find a, a, a task in handler called package uploaded and run it at that moment. So that you can, so let's say if you have to send an email at certain point or if there's an error earlier and then you have to notify somewhere you you can then go out of the thread uh, execution flow and then call and do whatever task you want to do in that uh, pip is available by default so you don't have to worry you can pass extra arguments uh, in pip uh, uh, as uh, uh, as virtual UN, as I'm passing virtual UNV uh, uh, there um, okay so how do you run this? Uh, Ansible is available as a pip uh, uh, install. Um, you so when I earlier when I said there is no uh, agent or no daemon that you have to run to, but you have to run this Ansible from a server so that it nodes it, it then goes and connects to all the inventory uh, with port on port twenty two with SSH and then runs those packages whatever we are doing in the task. Uh, you can test it locally by calling Ansible uh, on localhost uh, uh, with with the command. So let's say if you have to test it, uh, what command you have to run, which code you have to run, you, you can just use the first line to test the local execution uh, with Ansible. And there's uh, the, the second and the third example are basically once you write everything in your uh, playbook, you would save it as a playbook file and then ask Ansible playbook to run it uh, 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 for you. What this basically will do is uh, for in the second example, the minus i is for the inventory. Uh, I'll go and I'm looking for localhost in my inventory file. If it's not there, uh, I'll error out and uh, it will run the whole hello world YML uh, locally on my localhost. Uh, in the third one, I'm giving a path of an inventory file uh, and then running the whole uh, uh, Ansible uh, playbook for it. 
so this is very simple and the whole design was made to be this simple so in the whole point of having infrastructure as code uh, uh, was so that everybody can understand easily read it is easily uh, believe me this is not a very difficult topic to digest if you had earlier used puppet chef you have to go and figure out uh, and write scripts in ruby and other languages all that is uh, old school you can manage your whole infrastructure with few few uh, ansible playbooks based on how you write um so recently ansible also released uh, docker uh, integrations what you can basically do is uh, with docker containers you can define your container in an ansible playbook and then create those containers with uh, with and uh, by, by by running playbooks what this helps in is that let's say if you have if you don't have a docker hub and if you don't if you don't have containers ready you can boot up the containers in real time and then deploy those uh, with any of the other services that you have people are move people are using ansible as the default package to create those containers and manage them as well uh, and then the deploying part is is the one which or we already have with kubernetes or or whatever mesos uh, uh, ochopod or any anything else that you are using uh, you can also do image facts. So let's say if a Docker instance is running, you can go ahead and write a playbook to go and find out what is running in it, how many ports are open, and stuff like that. Uh, this was uh, uh, this was released earlier. We are yet to adapt it, uh, but it's quite simpler uh, to adapt. So some of uh, so these are the uh, core modules available uh, 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 with Ansible. So as, as you can see, uh, you can go and connect to EC2 instances. Uh, uh, you can create your clusters. You can manage your databases. Uh, you can write your own template files in Jinja and then use it as file management. So let's say if you're, if you're if you want to deploy a specific nginx configuration or specific usd con configuration you would write a jinja template and then use file modules in uh, uh, in ansible to save them in correct locations and these are happening remotely right so i i am my ansible box or wherever i am running my ansible is is not in the same in in the same ec2 instance that we are running Everything is, is being spoken with SSH. Uh, so what basically happens is whenever you write a task, that specific module is shipped to the box through SSH. It runs that module that you are trying to run and then deletes it from, from the inventory servers. This is far more cleaner than any other methods that we have available today. Um, and can be extensible, extendable as well uh, as you wish. So, so one, so 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 this is how you would run an Ansible deployment. Uh, this is just a brief of what I already spoke. You you need only a couple of files. One is an inventory file, uh, var files, and playbooks to run your Ansible orchestration or automation. Then you use Ansible on any of the servers to either ship it to Amazon and on different instances, or or create Docker instances and then shipping ship uh, ship them in in different containers. Or you can also use on your local host, which is the middle part. And this is the last thing, uh, which is that you can install it with just pip and requires nothing else. So that's it. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, you mentioned about uh, infrastructure as a code. Mm -hmm. um, So, 
So it, Ansible is just part of it. So infrastructure as code is everything what DevOps has been doing for last many years. So Puppet, Chef, uh, uh, SaltStack, all of them come in infrastructure as code. But the complexity to run a, a Puppet or a Chef client and a Chef uh, server is far more difficult because you, you not only have to write your automation modules in Ruby or in Python, but you also have to run different daemons and agents on different inventory files uh, for them to listen to this common controller which then ships these packets back. Ansible is the only one available in the market which runs without any agent and is the most uh, simpler to work with. So you would probably think it's very simpler, but it's very simpler. <laughs> so it's not that difficult to manage your infrastructure now with Ansible. And I couldn't put more complexity to in it in the presentation because those tasks are self-explanatory and then you have to just figure out, just go and search which exact task you have to run and then just send parameters as I described in the example. Yeah. Um, does it run slower than other uh, solution tools, like especially those with a master and uh, an agent kind of architecture? So they don't run slower uh, in terms of you, you're talking when I run an Ansible playbook, would it deploy slowly than Chef and other things, right? Yeah. The, the so. So the diff there's no much difference, right? So uh, remember when I said there's no agent running on with Ansible. But everything is still happening on on uh, on the in, in, on the specific server. So let's say you're you're writing a task which needs to um, uh, stop nginx. So there was a command which said shell and then etc nginx stop. So Ansible would ship these instructions uh, on uh, SSH pipeline mm -hmm. and send it to the server. The instructions are still run locally so it's not that uh, it's it's not uh, uh, time consuming or there's no compare it's relatively same